As humans, we all think about that final day. The day all the fake love come. The day everybody wished they had more time. The day we take that last breath. I don't know about y'all, but I often wish I could see how people would react, you know. When it's all said and done, when I'm gone, Something the subject of our story today was unfortunate enough to experience for himself. We talking about no other than the rap about a name of AMRD Hancho. But before we get deep into how this rapper lost his life, only to return, we gotta break down a man himself. Sneak this in there, nigga. Now you know I become an ammo gang. Fuck all these dudes. Yeah, 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 yeah. AMR D. Hancho, for those who don't know, is a well known St. Louis rapper who some argue may be the best in the city. And being considered a pioneer of what we call in St. Louis high speed music, the artist is considered nothing less than a legend at this point. But how did he get to this level? Well, AMR D started in a group all the locals at STL know too well. And you can guess it by the name, AMR. AMR consists of a few members and they originated on the north side of St. Louis. You know they got connections on the south. With AMR D, AMR Freak, and AMR Milski being the faces of the group. AMR Freak seemed to be the main star at the time, while Milski and D was pushing the group with big singles. AMR had an instant impact on the STL rap scene. And a lot of that was due to their ties in the streets, from the good and the bad. And of course, people were enjoying their music. It's a debate on who they say started the group who came up with the name was a D was a freak. Overall, it's something only the true members would know at this point. It wouldn't take D long to start dropping his own solo tracks. This is when the world got introduced to AMR D. Han Cho, the official name. Now that may seem like something small, but the name D. Cho's actually played a major part in how he got into some beef throughout the city. Already having buzz and people gravitating to his records, it made him a household name. Adding on the fact that Freak was also holding major weight, even snagging a feature from Ludurk at the time, which was crazy. Freaking D doing damage. They also was locking in with other artists doing damage around the city. Them boys on the south by the name of Jizzle Bucks and Lil Half and the Five Five Boys. Now this is another group that deserves their own story. So y'all want a Five Five Boys story, man? Let us know. We'll get you the Five Five Boys story, man. Now things was falling smoothly at this point for AMR. Everything they dropped was doing numbers. Of course, not everybody was a fan. Might have to drop a dime on them. Sure. I don't like that. They had people in the streets that didn't like them based on street situations. And some of those street situations ended up putting a major halt onto their success. AMR Freak was arrested and charged in a drug buzz. This obviously left a void in the group. With AMR Freak being the star kind at the time, it left D to hold double the responsibility. Something he took on with no problem, as him being the main focus only elevated his stardom. Now you remember the name situation, right? Because this is where it all starts to make sense. During the time of AMR Ron, there was another group that happened to be dominating the STL music scene. One of the first groups that we seen get some mainstream attention at the time with them being featured on Rolling Stone, which was a huge deal and still is to this day. This group was Three Problems. Now, for those who have seen our first episode, you know a little bit about Three Problems in the background story. If you haven't, make sure you go check that one out and let us know what you think. Now, for those who need a quick refresher, Three Problems is a group that consisted of three members, hence the name Three Problems. We had Lutte, Rello, is Swag. Now Swag being the subject of that episode, he was special to say the least. Now all the members are stars in their own right. 
the swag had an impact that simply was impressive, considering how little time he had to put that impact out. Now swag didn't just go by swag. His full name was actually Swag Honcho. Now this is where the stories tie together. On December 15, 2015, Swag Honcho tragically lost his life. Now this hit the city hard as you can expect, especially with Swag being in the position he was in. So how does this tie back to D Honcho? Well, for it to fully make sense, we gotta introduce one more character. And this is Heavy G. Heavy G, well known influence in the city. Some might say the biggest influence in the city. Heavy is known for being one of the few people in the city capable of hanging with anybody, as everybody usually has respect for him. Heavy comes across as someone who just wants to support everybody and not get caught up in the beef everybody got. People, everybody know I ain't on it. Right. Like, I'm cool with, hell, I'm, as a job, like, I, you know, in a job, you just do what's got to come. So I do what like, I want. Really like, this is like, I, if you see me behind the artist, it's not a favor. I, I fuck with them, like, that's what I'm believing in. Yeah. Heavy being who he was, he had close connections to Three Problems and the Hunter at the time. So, after Swag's death, Three Problems were still pretty much considered the biggest rappers in the city. So much so that Heavy came up with the idea that he considered to be a great one. With D. Huncho taking over the scene and Three Problems being a consistent number one, why not get number one and two on a song together? Makes sense, right? So Heavy reached out on behalf of D. without Huncho knowing and an attempt to get a feature from Lute. Lute told him he would do it, but only if D. paid him $1,000 and took Huncho out of his name completely. As Lite felt Swag was the original Hancho, and D shouldn't even be using the name. Heavy claims he never relayed that message to D, due to how disrespectful he thought it was. But the situation ended up sparking what some may say is the biggest beef in STL rap history. Heavy, my he be dying too much when he come to D. Are you on the feet? Tell him it's a G. Change the name to MRD. Hancho, bitch, I'm Hancho. What the f we keep hunch or ride one hunchos we gon' clear the scene. And no one really knows what happened to lead to what happened here. As you could expect though, this set the city on fire. Shots being fired seemingly out of nowhere. At that point no one expected beef between the two. They knew some of the same people. So it seemed like it was coming out of nowhere. But us from the streets we know, sometimes street situations happen that the public never know about. Now we're not saying that's what happened here, but it could have been something that happened and something that we may never know. Like it was a time a situation happened. He spoke on the situation, but he didn't know I know he spoke on the situation, you know? And that just stuck with me, you know what I'm saying? All the city knew is that it left a lot of us feeling the need to pick size. This is like Lil Durk vs. Young Boy in St. Louis before that was even a thing. Now luckily this beat isn't the biggest because of the casualties that it caused, but the biggest because the two biggest artists at the time weren't seeing eye to eye. And this isn't the only issue D. Hancho had at the time, but it was the most public. The beep dragged on for years with artists sending shots back at each other left and right, with both taking their fresh share of leaks. The two artists even discussed their beef between each other on separate interviews with Sean Cotton and Say Cheese TV. When three problems had a falling out? Oh yeah, we was never good. I mean, we was never together. Like, we was never together. I don't mess with them, like them people and stuff. But even when I when I see Three Problems interviews and I and I watch your interviews and things that you say, it's not that serious. Yeah, right? it ain't nothing serious. It's just on some on some hating stuff. Like they don't like what I got going on and look little, little stuff like that. So we just as far as rap or yeah, as far as rap, you know, I ne yeah, we don't even see them in in person. Like I never seen them in real life before. So it's just on some internet rap stuff. So wait, 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 wait. You never, y'all never seen each other in person. Nah, I never seen him in person. <laughs> How did this whole thing, you know, start off? Because 
it, it seems like it's just internet. Like he said, y'all never met before. Yeah. Him. He don't want to ever start this shit up. You know what I'm saying? Now, we're not saying that these guys are responsible for anything that happened to each other. But the public few led fans to make their own assumptions. Whether well, it was the beef of Lutz, hey, his other beefs around the city, or just the moment of opportunity, that was something that led to the moment he lost his life. On July 30th, 2021, Amwa Dihancha was announced dead by multiple outlets, with even videos circulating of his lifeless body in a car after being gunned down. Now, surprisingly, that footage is on YouTube, but we won't put it here. And if you want to see it, you know where to find it. Now, with this news breaking, a lot of fans mourned his death while some was celebrating. The ones that mourned it were upset like, this is exactly why we can't get somebody to make it out the city. Fans all across the world would be introduced to him for the first time due to this news. Only for the next day the world to be shocked after it was announced that Di Hancho was recovering. He was revived and having a successful surgery. A shock to so many, as most outlets usually wouldn't report a death until it's official. But this was a special case. Di Hancho was alive and well. Fans couldn't believe it. But we're all excited about the news. They wondered if he'd be the same, you know, after being shot. Would he come back with damages? Would he still be able to rap? What's going to happen? Luckily, that wasn't the case with D, as he made a miraculous recovery. Still able to rap, limbs and all. With outlets finding this information out, it only raised his stardom even more. With Say Cheese needing to double back and figure out how he survived death. We don't got to get too deep into it, but I do want to address it, because that's all that everybody's talking about right now with St. Louis. Right. Um, you know, you were shot in the car? Yeah. Okay, and how many times were you hit? I was shot 16 times. 16 times? Yeah. Okay, and do you remember where you were going? Uh, I was parked at a front, I was parked somewhere. Yeah, I was just parked somewhere. Were you on IG Live or anything? Um, no, I wasn't going live, but I posted it, uh, Probably posted a little stuff that I, ain't, I wasn't supposed to post at that time, but no, I went live though. Damn, 16 times, man, miracle. Yes. Cause you know, a video went out that day of the situation. The cop, I think, was trying to help you or something like that. Did you see yeah. it? Yeah, I seen all the videos. And was, was this your first time getting shot? Yeah, yeah, first and last. 16 times. Where where at uh, on your body where you where you hit? I shot in my arm four times, my leg six. I shot like ten times in, in this leg, three times in my um, right thigh, and three times in my hand. Man, it's a blessing, man, that you weren't shot. You know, in the chest area, the face yeah. area. Yeah. So you That's pretty much were hit below the waist, kinda. Yeah. Outside yeah. of your hand. Yeah. Ah oh, man, it, it, it's it's crazy. Um, were were you in the car by yourself? Yeah, but I was in the car by myself. And, and what's going through your head? You know, when this is when this is all this is taking place, what's going through your head? It happened so quick, like, and when I got shot, I was just numb for real. I was real, real numb to the situation until really I got to the hospital. Okay. And mm. did you ever feel like, you know, you was going to check out? Like, it it was over? I couldn't really. No, I couldn't see that. I was, my heart was still pumping. I was still going. I couldn't see that. I just had to keep going, stay strong, for real. Yeah. How long were you waiting before, you know, uh, help came? Well, I was waiting by, like, 20 minutes. 20 minutes just sitting there? Yeah, but I had that police on my leg helping me, though. So um, yeah, he really saved me. Okay, and he was he was telling you like what to do and how to sit up and shit like that. Yep, and time I putting pressure on my leg that I got shot the most in. Man, 
Yeah. You know, video came out of, I believe, the ambulance helping you. Uh, yeah, I don't even remember getting in the ambulance. That's the crazy part. Yeah, the video was you sitting in your car. Yeah. Do you know how that video got out? Somebody, I think somebody was on live. In the okay, area. so this was a random St. Louis person just walking yeah, up random, on the scene. Yeah, random, just saw and like put it on camera like, oh, that's DeHuncho. So yeah, knowing I'm known in my city, so yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, you seeing that, is it like, does it haunt you when you see a video of yourself? Um, not for real. Not for real, it just, um, when I look at it, I just, I just see like I'm strong for real. Like that don't even really fade me because I know like, but I was like, dang, I was messed up though. But it ain't really, it don't really phase me for real. Yeah. Man, 16 times of surviving, you here for a reason. Yeah, I'm here for a reason, most definitely. D does it make you look at life a little different? Like, okay, yeah, I, need to, I life, need to grow up. Yeah, way different. I was already, like had PTSD, like, but it just made me more like a word, more on point and stuff. Like, yeah, it just really, um, yeah, keep my head away more, ten times more. Yeah, you know, uh, I was on a, a blog site that's real popular in St. Louis. Uh, what is it, Blocko Tarantino? I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he reported on it, and um, a lot of people assumed that you passed away. They were DM and say cheese. We have hundreds of DMs. Um, I even got text messages about it. And a lot of people assumed you were you you passed away. Yeah. Dang, I was passed out on that video, but I ain't passed away though. Like I was you, out you, of it on that video. You get out the hospital, you check your phone. How many missed calls and text messages do you Man, see? Man, it was crazy. When I first got out and posted, I mean posted on my story, I got like 40,000 story story watches i'm like dang 40 i usually get like eight nine or something I'm like forty thousand on me yeah you got a lot of new eyes got like eleven thousand new followers you know yeah yeah so 16 times are there 16 are there bullets that still stuck in uh, you no or? i ain't got no book not one bullet in me 16 shots he claimed this half band's questioning <laughs> No way he got shot 16 times to survive. Is this one of these soldier boy stories? I hop out, I start shooting. Bow, 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 bow. Shot the nigga. Now, there's no way to confirm how many times he was actually shot without medical records. So we'll have to take his word for it, even if it's a little shaky. From this point, his status of stardom was solidified in STO lore. When I first got out, and post it, I mean, post it on my story. I got like 40,000 story, story watches. I'm like, dang, 40, I usually get like eight, nine or something, like 40,000 on me. Yeah, you got a lot of new eyes, got like 11,000 new followers, you know. Surviving 16 shots is something only a few humans can say. Now at this point before then, people would say he may have been the biggest in the city. Him and Lute neck and neck, you know? But after this, it was clear to a lot of people that he had become the biggest rapper in the city. He went on a crazy run, not letting up, and he didn't let him being shot stop him from being his braggadocious self. He was still sending shots at Lute, and he's still sending shots to Lute till this day, as well as all his other ops. Pretty much everything he's dropped has touched hundreds of thousand views since that point with a bunch of major cosigns from major artists all across the world. I think it's safe to say, at this point, the people who wish dead up on him are the ones actually rolling over in the grave.